Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about studying, note-taking, and how I specifically do that using RemNote. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Jorzen, I'm a third year medical student. I've been using RemNote to study for about one year now, and in my opinion, it's one of the best apps out there for students. It integrates active recall and spaced repetition into note-taking in a very seamless way. Today I'm going to take you through my RemNote knowledge base to show you how exactly I take notes from lectures and how I study with those notes to make my studying more efficient. I'm gonna split this video up into three parts. First, we're gonna talk about organizing and how I keep my notes in a very systematic format. Next, we're gonna be talking about how I take notes from lectures and how I understand things to make things more efficient. And finally, we're gonna be talking about how I implement active recall and spaced repetition and study those notes and memorize everything. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description and you can use the little YouTube chapters function so you can skip around the video if you'd like so you don't have to waste a lot of time. With that said, let's get into my workflow. Okay, so let's start off with organization. Organizing my notes in RemNode mostly happens within the sidebar. So if you've used RemNode before, you know that the sidebar has three parts. It has the pinned section, the draft section, and the finished section. I have changed the pinned section to become subjects rather than pinned because that just works better with my workflow. Now, the way you do this is by actually searching up something known as the document sidebar. And uh, once you go in there, you can uh, just, so for example, this used to be pinned and then you just double click this so it opens up as a page and then you can just change the name. So this used to be pinned, I made it subjects because that's where I actually put in all the subjects that I have to learn. So for example, we can see the pharmacology, cardiology, pathology, ENT, which is ear, nose, and throat, and also surgery. So when I have to study something or if I'm in class taking notes, what I would do is I would always make a new document for that specific note. And once I do that by going here, hovering over the little plus and making a new document, it pops up into the draft section, so we're, right now it's untitled, let's just call it new note, for example. And what happens is, since it's in the draft section, it gives me an overview of what I'm studying right now. So for example, we can see quite a bit here. And this is pretty useful for me because studying usually takes more than one study session for me. So coming back to RemNote and seeing what I have to do is sort of a good organization trick that I have come up with. Now, when I am done taking my notes, when I'm done making my flashcards or whatever, I can easily check this box right here and move to the finish section, which sort of acts like an archive. Now, I like my notes organized subject-wise, so how I do this is every time I have the new note, I can use the tag feature, and for example, if this is pharmacology, we can tag it as pharmacology, and if I open up pharmacology on the side here by shift-clicking, it's going to populate within here as a tagged rem. Now, this is pretty great about rem note, the organization using the tag system is pretty quick, it's pretty efficient, and I really like using that to organize everything subject-wise. And since I have my subjects pinned in the sidebar, I always have quick access to them. Now that we have our organization down, let's talk about how I take notes from my lectures into RemNode. Now, one feature that I love about RemNode and why I would consider it to be my favorite note-taking app out of all of them is the fact that RemNode allows you to make flashcards out of your notes without doing anything else. And this is pretty great because you don't have to waste time making your notes in one application and making your flashcards in another. Everything is pretty seamless, everything is pretty quick, and I really like that because it saves quite a bit of time. So due to this flashcard structure of RemNote, your notes are made to emphasize active recall and spaced repetition. So what is active recall, what is spaced repetition? They're basically the pillars of effective studying. I've made a video about active recall and spaced repetition, which you can watch up here, but in a nutshell, active recall is when you test yourself on the topic before rereading it. Active Recall is pretty great because the typical way of revision, at least for me, was that I would take my lecture, I would summarize everything in the lecture into my own words, and then I would keep rereading those notes until the exam came by, hoping some sort of osmosis happened from the notes to my brain. But that's pretty inefficient, and science has proven that there are more efficient ways of studying, and one of them is Active Recall, like I mentioned. So the first step that I take when taking notes for my lectures is I would skim through my entire lecture and write out every subheading as a bullet point. So for example, right here in this lecture about mood stabilizers, anxiolytics, and sedatives, I have written out the main subheadings. I was studying this before I shot this video, so that's why I have this in this way. Having a skeletal structure of your lecture helps you in figuring out what the important points are. More often than I would like to admit, I have taken too much time with certain topics just because I thought it was important, but in the end it was not. So this, like in the words of Ali Abdal, helps you not lose the tree from the forest. 
Anyway, let's go back to the antipsychotics notes. So once I've skimmed through the lecture, the next step that I do is I would read each part and while reading, I would ask myself, do I understand this? This is akin to something known as the Feynman technique, which is basically when you would ask yourself at each interval, can I explain this to a five-year-old? Now, the whole point of the Feynman technique is to know if you actually understood the topic that you are learning. And it, I feel like it's pretty important to differentiate between rote memorization and understanding. This is mainly because rote memorization works in the short term, but in the long term, you really want to understand things while learning so you can fit it into the bigger picture and you can use it with different insights and you can use it in different places, like for example, in medicine. So if I do have some gaps in my knowledge while asking myself, do I really understand this? I would use Google and then I would try to figure out stuff. And if sometimes Google, sometimes I would use even a textbook and I would make sure that I actually do understand things before I make notes on them. Once I have figured out that I have understood something, what I would do is I would then hide the lecture or I would just put it onto the other screen and I would try to write the notes out in my own words. Now this is basically after recall in action. I am not looking at what I just learned, what I just read, and I'm just writing it down in my own words. But when I'm writing it down, I would nest it under a question so I can revise it in the future using active recall. So for example, right here, we have this question, when is a person said to be in a psychotic state? This is usually when they present with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. I have written this out in the syntax that Remnant uses to make a flashcard, and this is automatically going to the flashcard queue so I can revise it using the spatial position algorithm, which I will get to in a little bit. Now, Remnant has multiple types of flashcards, which are pretty useful. So for example, right here, I was talking about the dopaminergic pathways, which are some pathways in your brain that are pretty important with psychosis. And what I can do with this picture right here that I've put in is I can actually make image occlusion cards. And if you're familiar with Enki, you know what image occlusion cards are. So basically I can just draw a little box around these labels right here and these are going to be flashcards in themselves so the flashcard right here is probably going to cover the a part the mesocortical part and i'm going to look at the picture look at the blue one and figure out which pathway that is and that is pretty helpful so like i said earlier the cool thing about remnote is that you can make elaborate notes like i have here and you can make flashcards at the same time and that is just saving a ton of time and i find that pretty useful now if you're not a flashcard person like me at times what you can do is you can use remnote's toggle function so a toggle is basically something that is nested under the note so for example right here we have positive symptoms so examples of positive symptoms i can just click this little button here and it gets hidden underneath the question and this is pretty useful too this is this can also be active recall so for example when i'm revising my notes i can go through it and it's asking me what are the examples of positive symptoms so if i remember right they can be delusions and hallucinations and i can just click it see if i'm right and that's just great now this is how i take notes from a lecture what about taking notes during class now the way i do this is also in remnant i would make a new document and for example we have the renal pathologies notes right here so like i said earlier you can you can quickly use keyboard shortcuts to make headings and subheadings and remnant is pretty quick for taking notes in general because it's all bullet points and everything is organized pretty automatically and while the lecture is going on, I can easily take screenshots, drag them into RamNote, everything fits in pretty well. And later on, I can go through these notes and then I can make flashcards out of everything right here. I don't have to do everything all over again. Like I said, it saves a lot of time. Now, if you're studying your lectures, you can open it side by side with RamNote, but RamNote also has a PDF editor, but sadly, this is a RamNote Pro feature, which you have to pay $6 a month for. But if you want to try out RamNote Pro for free, you can go down to the description. I will have an affiliate link down there with which you can get one free month of RamNote Pro. I will also get a kickback from this link, just letting you know. So it's, uh, it's happy vibes all around. Now, another cool feature that I use pretty often in RemNode is Rem references, which is basically bi-directional linking. So for example, if we go into the cardiomyopathies lecture here, I was talking about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and one of the things that happens in this is the left atrium gets enlarged, and this can lead to something known as atrial fibrillation, or AFib for short. So I have this little thing here that looks like a hyperlink, but this is a reference, and if I shift click this, we can see that it jumps to the notes about atrial fibrillation. Now, these are notes from my knowledge base from another lecture known as arrhythmias. So for example, in the future, if I was looking into these notes on cardiomyopathies and I didn't know what AFib was, for example, uh, I could easily click it and look at what AFib is because I have pretty detailed notes on it. Another thing this helps with is that in the AFib note, I can see that it has been referenced here. So 
in the future when I have a lot of things referencing back to AFib, I can have a bird's eye view of atrial fibrillation and things that cause it. That's pretty much how I take notes from my lectures and from classes into RemNote. Now, what about studying? What about revision? Let's talk about memorization. Memorization is extremely easy in RemNode. This is mainly because one, you're making flashcards while making your notes, and second is because it has a space repetition algorithm built in. So you have this thing called the master key, which is all your flashcards from all your notes. So if I click it right here, we have 28 flashcards that have to go through for the rest of the day. Now I mentioned that RemNode has a built-in space repetition algorithm. What does this mean? Space repetition is related to something known as the forgetting curve, which says that over time you tend to forget things and you can combat this forgetting curve by revising at certain intervals. And that's basically spacing out your repetition, hence the name space repetition. So previously I used to sort of calculate how long I have to wait before I study something again before I revise it again. And I used to do this by figuring out how well I did the last time and then figuring out a date after that. But with RemNote, I really don't need to do that because the algorithm does that for me. So every time you get a flashcard, so for example, right here, I'm gonna click the answer. You get these little reactions here. And if you use Anki, you'd know what these are. So with these reactions, you can tell it if you got the flashcard pretty correct, if you got it pretty wrong, or somewhere in between. And depending on your reaction, the algorithm is gonna figure out when to show you the card again to combat that forgetting curve. And that, I think that's pretty cool. Now there's a couple of reasons why I prefer Remnode's flashcard system over something like Anki or Quizlet. The first one is the hide function of the flashcard. And this is basically a way to make life a little bit easier. You know those moments when you're studying your flashcards and you accidentally hit your keyboard and it shows you the answer? With RemNode, if you hit H here, it's gonna put it back into the deck of flashcards without putting it into the algorithm. And it's just gonna show it to you an hour later. And I think that's just a pretty useful feature for students and everyone in general. Another thing that I really like about RemNode's flashcards is that it shows you the context of the flashcard and it's not just the question. So for example, right here, we can see that the question is about clozapine and side effects. And I can see that clozapine is in the atypical antipsychotics class of drugs in the antipsychotics lecture. And I think that's pretty useful, especially when you're going to those flashcards which are pretty obscure and which are pretty, pretty random. Having the skeletal structure right there in front of you helps you figure out what exactly the question is asking for. Another great reason that I like RemNode's flashcards is because I can easily practice these flashcards on the go on my phone by just logging into RemNode.io. So that was pretty much it for how I take notes in RemNode for medical school. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my other RemNode content, which I can link up right here. It's a whole playlist. And if you like more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm planning on making my videos a little bit more regular now. If you're planning on using RemNode, make sure you like the video and also leave a comment because I would love to know how many people I have actually convinced to move to Remnote. So I will see you in the next one then. Goodbye.